The reason why R wants to know this upfront and that you never had to deal with this if you dealt with, say, Bash or Unix, uh, Unix just assumes everything's a string. Everything's just text. And still told otherwise. That is problematic when you're doing a statistical language. So you do have a little bit of extra complexity to know. Okay. So what can, what verbs can we use with what data types? I told you that R really cares what these things are before we can do anything with them, right? It needs to know if it's an integer right off the bat. It needs to know if it's a string right off the bat. And that's because these things are treated as objects. Objects are one of those, those uh, constructs in programming that I did not get for a long time, and it was really, really helpful once I got it. So the way I think about it and tends to help is if you think about objects as you think about objects in real life. Okay, everybody, think of a car. Got one? Okay. Everybody is likely got a different car in their mind, right? I might be thinking of my, my car, you might be thinking of the car you want, or whatnot. But there's some things we can assume about this, right? They all probably have four wheels, they have doors, they have a transmission of some sort, they have a color, they have uh, a brand. These are all things that are typical to this general construct of car, right? Okay, let's part out of your mind. Nothing about a dog. Your dog is, again, going to be very, very different than what my dog is, right? I'm thinking of my puppies at home. You're probably not because you don't know what they are. But dogs that, are, that you're thinking about are going to have, again, similar characteristics and similar verbs attached to them, right? They're going to have a breed, they're going to have a name, they're going to have an age, and they're also likely going to have functions that dogs do, like run, control, sleep, etc. And some of these things are shared between your car and your dog, right? They both have a color, if you're like me, they have a name, they have age, they have a type. But they have differences as well. You don't expect your dog to have a transmission type. You don't expect your car to have a breed. You can't put your dog in drive or expect your car to control, right? Your car is ruling, you have major mechanical problems. That is a verb associated with that construct. R is a class of object. It is a prototype for you to use to, as a shorthand of the things that you can do with that object. Your individual version of that, your car, my car, etc., is the specific object of that car class or that dog class. Does that make a little sense? It's a, uh, a quick and easy way to have a prototype for individual instances. This is how data is worked with in R. So we have uh, strings. Strings, if you add strings together, you're going to have longer strings. If you add numbers together, you're going to get a different number. The way you work with the data is going to be a little bit different, given what kind of data it is. And like I said before, if you're using a matrix, there's certain things you can do, like matrix algebra that you can't do in the data frame because some of those are strings. Does that make a little sense? Okay. 